Okay, so today I'll be tearing down a uh, IBM keyboard. It is a IBM uh, 93Y1211. It's a POS keyboard. We'll take a look inside. So there are a few special things about this keyboard. Uh, mainly that uh, the keys are totally modular, totally removable, and IBM replaceable, which is a POS kind of standard. And it also has a mag strip reader as well as a key and a uh, special area where you could put a trackpad if you had an IBM trackpad. This one is not configured with that option. So I'm going to start to take it apart here and I'll just cut to the chase. There are about six screws on the bottom and each of the modules is removable with one locking screw. Here's the mag strip portion of the keyboard. Uh, that's uh, fairly simple and straightforward and it's a three track read only. Uh, mag strip, I believe three track. This is the uh, the portion for the optional trackpad, which I do not have, so they just cover up with a plastic cover. And then over here we have the uh, key enable and disable, which acts as just its own key. Uh, that one's fairly easy to get out, and we'll go into all of these modules later on. So here's the keyboard without any modules in it, and now I'm just going to remove the back with my drill. So here's the back removed, uh, there's the main control board, and uh, as you can tell it's quite a clicky keyboard, it's quite loud. So fairly annoying keyboard, now there's about a billion screws roughly now between the, to separate the keyboard layer from the uh, plastic backing layer. So I'm going to remove those now and uh, we'll see what's beneath. So here we'll go, we'll open it up. Uh, initially, I thought this was a mechanical keyboard but I was uh, disappointed to see it wasn't. I thought for a POS, for a commercial keyboard, it would make sense to be mechanical. So that's the bottom of the keyboard I just removed, and at the very top are the keys, which are upside down right now. And so this is a resistive kind of pad, a film, two layers of film uh, that have been wired in such a way uh, to produce the key presses, and I'll show you how. Basically, uh, each key depressed pushes a pin down which in turn presses down on that pad, uh, giving us a higher, no, a lower resistance, which allows the uh, microprocessor within the keyboard to know that you've depressed that key. So I think all the keys are probably running a small amount of resistance, and it's looking for peaks in that. A uh, mechanical keyboard would be more of an on or off. Here you can see the film overlaid on the keys. One of the strange quirks about this keyboard is it's got a lot of strange lights, which are, I guess, for commercial purposes. doesn't make a lot of sense. Here's the sound and look of the keyboard being depressed. So here's a closer look at the uh, mat that sits under the keys. Each of these keys uh, presses on this circle, and uh, up top we have the flat flex connector, which connects to the uh, main board, the brains of the unit. Uh, that's a no standard to that cable. Uh, the layers seem to be laminated or glued together at the edges as well as the screw holes. There is a third layer to this keyboard. You can see it on the bottom of the screen there, which is the uh, silicone mat, which kind of adds a little bit of a softer feel to each key. A very nice addition. So then each of the module locations have their own plug uh, clipped into the keyboard here and that is just wired to the main board. Pretty simple design. So now we'll talk about the chips on the processing board. Uh, so there's two main ones doing most of the thinking. The one on the left is a Texas Instruments USB controller and the one on the right is a ST32F103. And these chips are, are quite powerful for a keyboard. It consists of a uh, ARM Cortex M3 32-bit RISC core 
and uh, it has 64 pins, um, so it's really quite powerful. And there are quite a few breakout boards available for this chip in order to use it as an I.O. or a uh, prototyping platform. So there is some power behind this. Now, at the top left, we can see one thing and another on the top right, so we'll talk about those. The one is the, the proprietary 12-pin uh, USB connector, which may be for a serial as well, and also the insertion force required uh, flat flex cable connections. Now on the uh, chip we saw on the left, which is a TI-TUSB 2046B, it's a USB interface, four port hub, uh, it's a 32 pin package and it runs at 3.3 volts, it's a fairly jelly bean part. So now that's the uh, main processing board and all the logic behind the unit. Now we'll open up the module for the uh, key unit. Uh, here's the plug. I found this module fairly hard to open and uh, so I'll skip that process and uh, we'll move on. So here I get it open and on the inside connected to the key is a red shaft. Uh, when that shaft rotates it rotates the magnet on the end and that slides over top of the board here which is basically a glorified read switch and telling the, the processor that it's open. And the last thing is that because it's a commercial keyboard most of the plastic used in it was a fiber reinforced ABS 40 percent. So that concludes my teardown. Thank you for watching. Uh, I just wanted to just clarify that I get all my equipment for these teardowns in the recycling. Uh, so these are things that work that people have thrown out. Um, this is a fully functioning keyboard and I use it today at my desktop, so thank you again for watching.